best and worst of Exorcist 3 for Rich Webster. Darren, Exorcist 3 negates part two. It doesn't reference it at all, does it? And I think everybody no. hated it so much that they just naturally I don't think even they skip, do they? They just they just don't mention it. It did good at the box office, right? I mean I think mm-hmm. it made like fifty mil or something like that. How'd you feel when you watched this? Um, I I haven't seen it since it came out, I don't think. I think I, I've, <laughs> I, there's a lot of films like that. We're going to do Dracula after yeah. that. And it's exactly the yeah. same with that film as well. So um, I was like kind of pleasantly surprised about how how tight and how sharp and and how um, how well they did to kind of bring a movie out that is not as good as the original, but is something you can't take your eyes off. I mean, how, how do you feel about um, George C. Scott? taken over i was worried about his trousers because his flies are like that long that's what i was worried about <laughs> bless him george c scott with those big old <laughs> trousers around here like that um yeah no he's fantastic in this like i mean obviously a a, a really well-established actor oscar winner um and you know takes on the mantle of um uh, Lee J. Cobb, who played Kinderman mm-hmm. in the original film, who sadly died like three years after the original film came out. Um, so, and at the start of the film, um, he's going to see his buddy, um, Father Dyer, who we know from the original film, uh, who was played by William O'Malley, but for some reason didn't come back for this. Um, I guess people didn't believe in it, did they? You know, I, I guess no. that, I mean, Jason Miller, they obviously got to come back, but I think a lot of people were kind of, after the second one, were like, do I want to be associated with this? Um, but yeah. Look what Linda Blair got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so they recast Father Dyer with Ed Flanders. The two of them struggle on the anniversary of, 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 yeah. of you know, F- Father Karras's death. And so they celebrate. Well, they, they don't celebrate, but they kind of try to cheer you know, each drinking. other. Yeah, they, you know, they, they try to cheer each other up by, by hanging out on that anniversary. And in this particular instance, they go to the cinema, right? <laughs> they go to the I, cinema to watch It's a Wonderful Life or some shit. I yeah, I, I can't remember what film it was they were watching. Um, but the movie starts from there, where we're reintroduced to these two characters. And Blatty does it in such a cool way. Because, you know you're engaged with them right from the beginning because of one mm-hmm. thing because of george c scott and this amazing monologue that he has um which just had me in stitches but we'll get on to that let's start i have to say something though george c scott plays these like parental figures these cops or anything with him yelling at you darren would you just confess even if you didn't do anything <laughs> he does like an, an outburst doesn't he shut your mouth he really does kind You're of like Gal Yeah. Fuck okay. He, man. He does, if you say I have him. He does like a scream and a shout. Which is pretty cool. But given what he's been through over the last, you know, what was it, fifteen years, I think it was. This is set in eighty eight, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fifteen years after um the events of the original Exorcist. So yeah, so he, his character is somewhat kind of I guess more intense than he was the last time that we um, that we saw him in the original Exorcist. Do you think he's on the borderline of believing? I think so. I think so for sure. Is that why you know he's kind of torn? He's tired. Kind of, he's, he's like I'm a cop. I go by physical evidence, hmm. not you know like the realms as he calls them. You know the mystics and, and spaceships yeah. and, and space and everything. And I think there was a part of him in the original that sort of believed in some way and i think that's why he has this close affinity to 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 father dyer in order to you know it's a comfort blanket for him i think yeah yeah Yeah, this is it's his it's one of his best friends too Mm. in the in the uh even though it's probably wasn't his they came together over their over over uh uh damien's death yeah yeah absolutely yeah and then yeah oh and uh dyer is dyer in the uh in the bed in the hospital bed that, uh, 
Oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> really? We're going to have to do better than that for... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Womp, womp, womp. Cricket, cricket. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get a cricket noise every I time, you know. Didn't I have one? I don't hear it. Oh, that's like, a flat line. Like this? Oh. Yeah, you could do that or the cricket. Like this? Maybe you have to download it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little joke oh, no, there. Little no, joke there. No, it won't stop. <laughs> There okay. Goes. Yeah. All right. Best character for you, Exorcist Three. I mean, it has to be George C. Scott, doesn't it? You know, yeah, you Lieutenant, really, King, Lieutenant King. Yeah, yeah, he pulls it out of the bag as Lieutenant Kinderman. Um, he was sixty-three in this, which is kind of a bit worrying. Guy looked older than a lot older than what he was. Um, After Strange Love, he looked like he was fifty. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, again, Oscar winner died in nineteen ninety-nine. Sadly, age seventy-one. But, um, too young. Too young, yeah. But obviously, he's lived a life, and it shows oh. on <laughs> it shows on screen here. Uh, but he is like a solid character, and you, he, he has this incredible voyage of discovery throughout this film where he experiences every fucking emotion imaginable. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I, you, you can't take your eyes off him in this film. Such a, such yeah. a fine I actor. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, George C. Scott's uh, version of Lieutenant uh, Kinderman. Um, a, a strong presence on screen. A man who can, in a blink of an eye, show real true emotion. Yeah. That one part where that nurse is going to his home and he knows it's a possessed catatonic. Hmm. Um, that, you know, he's, as he's getting Danny to uh, drive him. You know, he's biting his hand and everything and telling her, well, you son of a bitch, you know, and everything. <laughs> he would have been a good Quint, wouldn't he? Or Loomis. <laughs> yeah. Or, Lo or Loomis. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just, every time he's on on screen, like you said, you're just attracted to him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He it, It's just, he has a real presence, doesn't he? I mean, you know, not, not only in, in his size, but he, he has an intimidating presence, I think. Um, but he's intimidated flawed. Zipper. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> intimidated. What? Zipper. Zipper. That is pants. <laughs> it is an intimidating zipper. You're right. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. No, you you really do feel his presence every time he's on screen, and for that, you just can't take your eyes off him. And he, he, there are points in the film where you fear for him, and there are points in the film where he really fears for himself, both physically and emotionally as well. As he, we see a number of breakdowns from him in this film, which is which is really interesting to watch. But um, yeah, certainly the best character in this. Could you imagine like him being your father? Like would it would be like real terrifying at some at some straight. Like, like he when he was kissing his daughter, it was very loving. You know, he's like, "Have a good night, sweetie. You mm -hmm. know, love you and everything." But could you imagine if he's like, get to bed? You know, you would just be like, holy shit. Yeah, he can. He, he, he's, he, he's an impressive man. Yeah, he, it's he, that voice. Hmm. He can be quite a force. And I just worried for him in a few of the scenes because, you know, like you mentioned, the scene where he's going, um, trying to get home to his daughter. Uh, there's that moment where he gets out of the car and I thought, I was thinking, don't, don't, don't run too fast. You'll either stack it or you'll have a heart attack or something. <laughs> Poor bugger, you know, trying to do those uh, those those action scenes, if you like. Backflip right into the... <laughs> right through the window. <laughs> uh, worst character. Uh, worst character in this. Okay. Some of you may have spotted this. Some of you may have not spotted this. Um, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. When there's that dream sequence where he's in heaven and he's mm -hmm. uh, he's talking to the kid who's been murdered, um, mm -hmm. and he walks past Fabio as an angel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A couple. Uh, a couple um, celebrities are in that there dream are. sequence. Samuel L. Jackson. He's yeah, who's blind? Yeah, yeah. And then was it some? Baseball coach or something like that that's in there? Uh, Patrick Ewing, the center for the New York uh, Knicks. Knicks. That's, the basket, angel of that's death. basketball, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's the yeah. angel of death. Yeah. 
yeah so it's 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 an interesting scene i'm not sure mm -hmm. i haven't watched the legion cut yet whether that's in there or not i don't know um i believe that the movie's quite different in a lot of ways for me i would say it's the scene in the movie that i enjoyed least i think it took me kind of out of the film a little bit for a few minutes there and when i was watching it because i couldn't remember it because it was so long ago since i saw it i was thinking oh my god i, was not, I hope there's not much of this stuff um <laughs> you enjoyed that scene uh there, there was no weight to the, to the hmm. plot um it didn't but, add you know, anything me, for me no i mean seeing like fabio i'm like okay well whatever uh and then seeing patrick ewing i was more excited to see patrick ewing i'm like holy shit there was patrick ewing and then you know you got samuel jackson is there as a blind guy can't see you motherfucker you know <laughs> but apparently I, I don't like the way heaven is set up you don't it's old no it's all shoddy fucking 30 and 20s you know bands big bands and, and old ladies in, in their fucking pianos and uh, angels <laughs> are sitting there by your bed People playing harps and things like that, yeah. Yeah, and Betty Goodman, uh, Betty Goodman's there with his, you know, clarinet, you know, and all that <laughs> shit. And, and but it looks like it's just very. It looks like hell would be more organized, right? Yeah, it was. It was. It's an odd scene, and you know, I just. It's a scene where he's kind of. It's just kind of, I guess, sort of reconfirming his faith, in some ways. Um. But you die, but you go into heaven the way you died. It looks awful. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. got their neck stitched, you know, yeah. that's been cut off. And yeah. little Jesus, you know, has been on the head, you know, it's just, it looks like this is not the, 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 the heaven that I want to go to. So if I die in my own shit, <laughs> you know, am I going to be sneaking up the joint? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you get to a car accident there and are crossing the street and, or the tube crashes. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, and your face is all planted like this. Are you going to go that way? I mean, your glasses are just not going to fit right. I the, the the thing is it's like, you know, I I didn't feel it added anything to the to the, to the movie. Other people not will. At all. When you put it that way when you're talking about you know, like you see his his body with the, the the neck kind of stitched back and everything. Um it's it's kind of a it's almost like nightmarish as well, isn't it? As as well as being a kind of I don't know whether it's supposed to be a comforting dream that he's had or what. I've no idea, but um, for me, it was like you say, is slightly, slightly hellish. Okay, your best line. Best line in the movie for me would be um, the carp speech. Um, when and I sent you, you a told message me you about love this. this. I you, love you sent this me a message, ladies. He's he sent me a message, ladies and gentlemen, and said this carp scene's the best fucking thing ever. <laughs> Priceless. <laughs> It is. But go ahead and say it. When he's just on, like that, he's just on the way out of the theater with his buddy, um, Father like, Dyer. Beginning of the movie. And and he's they're checking in on what they're doing over the weekend or whatever. And you see at the start of the film when you see a slice of Kinderman's family life that his elderly mother in law, I think it is, is there. Um mm -hmm. and he says, My wife's mother is visiting father. And Tuesday night she's cooking up a carp. It's a tasty fish. I've got nothing against it, but it's supposedly filled with impurities. She buys it live, and for three days, it's been swimming up and down in my bathtub. Up and down. And I hate it. I can't stand the sight of it, moving its gills. Now you're standing very close to me, father. Have you noticed? Yes. I haven't had a bath for three days. I can't go home until the carp is asleep, because if I see it swimming, I'll kill it. You're standing very close to me, Father, have you noticed? Yes. I haven't had a bath for three days. What a line. What an introduction to those two characters. <laughs> Fantastic. Had enough of this fucking fish. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like there in his face when he's telling him this. <laughs> I stink. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. not a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just someone's log. That's yeah, been floating. yeah. <laughs> In the bath. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I got two. Oh, okay. I got two. 
uh, both coming from the Gemini Killer, uh, played by the gra- uh, great uh, Brad Dorf. Um, it's the smiles that keep us going, the bits of giggles and good cheer. <laughs> There's one. <laughs> uh, and the other one is uh, a decapitated head can continue to see for approximately 20 seconds. So when I have one that's gawking, I always hold it up so it could uh, see its own body. It's a little it's a little extra I throw in for no added charge. I must admit, it makes me chuckle every time. Life is fun. It's a wonderful life, in fact, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> see your body? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no charge. There you go. <laughs> He's really good in this. He is He's good. He's really good. He's good. Although he lets himself down in one particular moment, which is my worst line, which we can move okay. on to now. And right now. Charles Play Lieutenant. Why did you do that? Why did you use that line? It's a little, you know. I, I, it's. Is that. Was it done on purpose? It, it, it wouldn't have. It's not needed, and yeah. all it does is kind of jar and take you out of the film and out of that character for that split second. Um, those of you who don't know, I'm sure you all do, but Brad Dorif is obviously Chucky as well as the Gemini killer in this, and he uses that line when he's when he's talking to Lieutenant Kinderman, and I just thought, no. People see it as a funny he story. He went there. He did. People see it as a fun Easter egg, but this is an incredibly serious horror film that we're watching. Yeah. Um, I just don't... I don't think it has any place in this film. Now, let's see. He could use different lines in this film. He could say, they got me locked up like one flew over the cuckoo's nest, don't mm. they? <laughs> it's like child's play, isn't it, yeah, Lieutenant? Yeah, yeah. He could have used that other one as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I don't know what you think. I, 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 for me, it just jarred when I heard that. Yeah, I can understand it. You know, and it for my worst line, it's it's coming from Nurse Allerton. But I think she's a good character. I like Nancy Fish a lot. Hmm. I like Nancy Fish. Yeah, but it's that line. I'm a bitch. Well, we know. You don't have to say it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're a bitch. And all of a sudden, she just she's 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 friendly but then off her rocker too um it, it's I, I i don't like her character too much i don't i don't think she i think she showed up too much yeah she's kind of i don't know is she this version this movie's version of what's her face in cuckoo's nest um oh what do they call the nurse? rat na- uh, ratchet ratchet yeah 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 kind of but um I mean, there's there's a few interesting characters in this within the actual institution and stuff. You know, um, uh, Vivica Linfors, who plays Nurse X, mm-hmm. who ends up going over to, to um, uh, Kinnaman's house and, and attacking his family. That's Aunt Bedelia from Creepshow. Did you know that? Saw it right away. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it took me a while for it to, to, to register. And then the girl who plays Nurse Keating, Tracy Thorne, um, mm. Does she do conventions? I haven't seen her. Okay. I haven't seen her around. She should do because, as she says in the um, in the in the documentary that's on the DVD, you know, she's down in history as being in the m- biggest jump scare in horror history. I think. Yeah, um, and she's the only one wearing color. Yes, in, in that whole place. Yeah, yeah. And, Besides and all, the cops, have you seen her recently? She looks gorgeous. She is ripped, like shredded, like a female bodybuilder or something. Mm-hmm. I don't think oh. she's. I don't think she's done too much in the way of movies, but um, yeah, she's certainly. Uh, she's. I don't know whether she's a part-time bodybuilder or something like that, or a gymnast or something. But are you okay? Just thinking of places she could put her thermometer. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Ah, uh, me. Yeah, no, I know. I wasn't thinking oh, okay. about putting it in me. Um, you get have George C. Scott do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm saving the best kill for my best moment because we all know what it is. Okay. But other than that, uh, what is your best kill? I th- I I quite like the the father dies blood supply moment where he they go, which is the, weird for me. Oh, I think it's a really kind of eerie and odd and, and unsettling kill. 
they go in there his um his 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 body's covered up but at the side of him there's all these vials of blood um and he questions where well, kinderman questions what they are and I think one of his uh, one of his cops, one of these. Uh, the gentleman who plays Cappy in the Towering Inferno, his name escapes me at the moment, but um, <laughs> he's one of the firefighters in the Towering Inferno. He turns around and says, eight pi- what does he say? Eight pints or something? Eight pints. Yeah, yeah, yeah eight pints. Uh, it looks very he- little, doesn't it? It doesn't look like there should be two buckets at least. Yeah, well, you know, you never know. You know, perspective and all that. I'm sure they're about that I, big. I do know. <laughs> so the blood's been drained from him without even so much of a drop spilt anywhere and it's just kind of sitting in these nice neat vials at the side of the bed or were they vials or were they um like little like, pots? like urine cups yeah urine yeah. cups <laughs> yeah they're pissing this oh yeah, this, yeah but how, you've just said how small they are how much do you pee like a fucking you know 25 mil or something um, you know, depends how much you have in you, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, 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 but there's only one, but there is blood, isn't there? Mm. There's only one part where there, where there is blood. Yeah. Where's that? His finger? And it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, in his own uh, writing. Oh, uh, on the wall. It's a wonderful yeah. life. Yeah. It's yeah. A, with the wonderful spell wrong, the double L's. And that's a yeah. great moment as well, where George C. Scott does that outburst to uh, the guy who runs the Institute. That It could be the original. What do they call him? Gemini killer. It's it's yeah. a powerful scene too because he he he, he doesn't want to open the sheet, but he does, and he does this ah, ah, like he's really like distraught. Well, he doesn't his, want to cry, so he's holding all of his emotion back. It's his buddy, so you know he's it's his best friend. Yeah, of course. Yeah, seeing George C. Scott cry is awful too. For me, my best kill is the confession priest, um, Conovan. Yes. And the reason why I picked that is because of his of his reaction to the person who's telling him and him seeing him, you know, and just like terrified, absolutely terrified. And then um, ultimately, um, I think, makes uh, Kinderman believe more that it's the uh, Gemini hmm. besides, you know, Father Dyer with It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just choos- choosing the case. But yeah. For something that I don't see on screen with him dying, but seeing his reaction and what happened to him, um, I had to pick it because, of course, you know, the one scene we're going to pick for our best moment. <laughs> uh, okay, your worst kill. Uh, worst kill, I would say, um, is Scott Wilson's uh Dr. Temple, Scott Wilson, or Herschel, as we know from The Walking Dead. Man, that guy aged quickly. He looks, you know, okay, so you take him from... Um, in the heat of the night, hmm. handsome, you know, has, has the slick uh, hair yeah, yeah. going over, yeah. greaser. Then you jump about 30 years, go to this movie, or 20 years, I should say, or something around there. Go to this movie, he looks like somebody's dad. <laughs> and then you go to The Walking Dead, which is, a, which is like 30 years plus, and he looks like somebody's grandfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he aged, I didn't even know it was him. I honestly didn't know it was him until I um, until I looked at the the cast and that and what they'd been in before. So he's the um, he's the, the uh, what's his name, Doctor Temple. He's Doctor Temple, and his suicide is probably the worst kill because it's completely off screen. And at first I thought that it was to do with what was going on, but no, he was just a kind of manic depressive and really unhinged as. W- w- and and took his own life because of the events of what was going on and that's yeah. you know that's explained to us by the gemini killer that he wasn't responsible for him he actually did and if he did done it he would have relished in that right yeah but no yeah. The, the guy took his own life and so you don't see anything there i mean you don't you, we don't need to see anything but in terms of you know the the the, the kills that are presented to us it's probably the weakest in the film uh what about uh the altar boy well, you're helping all the <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, you're helping all the older boy. Um, Father. <laughs> uh, just because of the way they described what happened to him, hmm. it, it is, of course, his head was decapitated, but they replaced it with Jesus. Yeah, yeah. That's bad. And then you see him 
uh, and like dream sequences and everything. He's got the Jesus head on. He's got the mask. <laughs> That's pretty messed up. The kid's like 13, 12 years old, Darren. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yeah. And, he's and, pol- and then, he apologizes to him, though, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, hey, and then when he's in that dream uh, up in heaven, and, and Kinderman is, uh, you know, they're like, He's like, hey, Lieutenant, how you doing? I'm doing fine, my boy. How are you doing? You know, he's just... <laughs> go on and play. There you go. <laughs> Don't notice the head's gone, you know? Yeah, it kind of yeah. looks like, you know, somebody who should have been somewhere else. <laughs> okay, best moment. Let's talk about this. Best Our best moment. moment. It's got to be that jump scare. And we held it off from our jump scare episode a couple of months ago because we knew we were covering this. And, um, yeah, it's that moment where they they really kind of, how to put this now? Prolong it. They prolong it, and they diffuse it a number of times, luring you to, into this false sense of security, and then it strikes. And when it strikes, it's just like, I mean, knowing what happens, it has no effect on me these days because I've seen it infinitum it's on everything you know and it, uh, everybody's youtube videos everybody talks about that jump scare in exorcist 3 and it's hugely effective to those who haven't seen the movie or don't know what's happening uh or, or what's going to happen massively effective it's so good and those lethal shears that they have <laughs> watching it again yesterday i knew it was coming it has no effect on me whatsoever now however it's a incredible um piece of filmmaking is that whole sequence when she's checking the rooms um so hats off to william peter blatty for what he created there because it's still talked about 34 years later they zoom in on it so you're up front with it yeah you you be you become a, a an observer far back hmm and then as soon as that jump scare happens, it's right there. You you are right in front of it. Yeah. So you have no choice but to like kind of like almost <laughs> uh, almost uh, kind of intentionally uh, uh, react to it. Yeah. Uh, and I have to say the um, the daughter with the nurse and her shears, that's pretty gruesome, too. Oh, pretty yeah. Close. Yeah. Yeah. In the in the kitchen or whatever it is where that where that's taking place. There's only one thing in that scene, and I don't know why it's like that. I mean, it's that wire when when he's is it? I can't remember who's getting pulled backwards now. Somebody gets pulled backwards against the wall, and you can blatantly see this cable work that's going on, which is such a shame because you can't really fault anything else in the film in terms of the visual effects that they do. Yeah. Um, but you know that's what happens when you restore these things and do 4K transfers and. Um, it, it, uh, a lot of blemishes and impurities and things like that. Anything like the, the magic of cinema is exposed these days with yeah. with with high definition 4K and and such. So uh, it's a shame that that's so visible. I have to ask you really quick. How do you feel about him? Uh, how, about uh, Father Morning? He's a fellow Brit, right? Yep, he is. But he, I, I've seen him in better shit. <laughs> it's it's an odd character. Um, because like you say, he's only in two scenes. He's in this one scene early on and then all of a sudden bursts through the door to kind of carry out the exorcism on, um, uh, on Father Karras or, or, or the patient X and, and the Gemini killer, if you like. But, um, yeah, it's an odd character who kind of just kind of comes in from nowhere. Um, what's the deal with him? He's, uh, he performed an exorcism in, in one of the uh, Latin American countries and his hair went white. Hmm. from it yeah yeah um i'm just like okay so we we really don't need him i wasn't going to put him as my worst character but i don't think we went over our worst character yeah fabio oh okay i don't <laughs> think i went over mine <laughs> well anyway he wasn't my for my worst character I, I mean i picked uh father riley uh from the university press as the university president okay because he just sits there like this right we got to talk to Father Morning. His hair went white, and then when they, when George C. Scott or Kinderman hears that noise, he's still sitting in that fucking chair. <laughs> Didn't fucking care one one bit. So, <laughs> yeah, but uh, okay, that was Exorcist Three. Good movie. People have asked us if we're covering Exorcist Two. I can't talk about Exorcist Two. It's just mental. You know, we we don't need to talk about that one. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. 
But this, this, I, I do like. And, you know, my wife, who burst into the room to tell me something important right when uh, when he had the gun at his head at the end, I was like, shh, shh, shh. He went, oh, is this the best bit? And I was like, no, it's the most crucial bit. So, <laughs> so yeah, so she... I'll we, bug her we, off. She apologised afterwards. But, um, no, I like this film. And, uh, and thanks to... Um, who is it, Richard? Rich, uh, Rich Webster. Richard Webster, yeah. Our buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah. For um, for choosing it. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen. On that note, we'll be back with more best and worst of. And uh, as always, stick to the roads. And the best of luck. See you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.